Sometimes I just write when it's quiet, and I have no idea why. When others dream about their lost loves or requited riches, I wake up suddenly when I hear a sentence coming together in my head like separated friends holding a long-awaited reunion. Those words haven't had only one space in between them since I don't know when, and it just feels so right to put them back together again. Words are the most powerful weapons. And once they inflict their blow, they are the most powerful medicine. And I think that's why I love inscribing diction into the air, because in those moments of writing, the words that you choose from a collection bin in your head are suddenly yours to wield like a shield in battle or serve as a potent mixture, ready to mend someone's heart. And people always tell me writing isn't a real career because I can't sit in an office or a lab grinding away at the problems of the world and fix them, but maybe it's a different kind of reconstruction. No, I will never patch the cracked foundation of this world with cement or sew it back together with a needle and some thread. But there are these words inside of me telling me I can write so that maybe the people out there holding guns and vaccines, the kind you really shoot, can have something to stand behind, something to feel, something that when they hear or read, they can laugh or cry or be inspired. And that can't be more real. when camp's over and you're one of the last ones there and you don't really want to leave or stay because leaving means that it's really over but the longer you stay the more the way you look at it seems to fade the feeling of getting home from a funeral in the middle of the day and there's nothing left to do the feeling of looking at an empty stage after the set is taken down and you step out on stage and all the magic that used to fuel your euphoria has broken the fourth wall and run away the feeling of finishing a book series that you've been unhealthily emotionally invested in and shutting the book and realizing that it, regrettably, is really over. The feeling of turning the lights on at the end of the party. The feeling of getting home from a sleepover at 10 a.m. The feeling of sweeping the floor after the food fight. The feeling of Sundays when you can only do homework and it's hardly the weekend, but it still sort of is. The feeling of such a clean break that it's so clean and precise that you almost can't even see it, you can still feel, but you can still feel it. You know that feeling? What is that? Is there a word for that? Ghost, maybe? The feeling like there is unfinished business that you can't get done? The melancholy that hits you like a tidal wave? The color of butterscotch pudding? The end of a book that doesn't have a happy ending? You know that feeling? I hate it. Because that feeling itself is so vague, but it's not good, and there's no way to get rid of it. The lingering, the unwillingness of the ending, the door that's not quite shut, the almost but not quite, the close but no cigar. It makes me wish I didn't take things for granted so much. Makes me want to savor every last sip of soda. Makes me yearn for just one more turn, just one last look, one more time. I'm never ready for the goodbye, for the end, for the airplane to shoot sky high and disappear behind the white misty puffs of clouds. Sometimes, I really wish I could just go back to the beginning. But the good news is, population biologists estimate that there are seven babies born every second. The, be the best authors are still writing. The moon is going to keep the tide going in and out. There are more buildings being built. And even though the prettiest rose will wilt, another one will grow in its place. Energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transferred. So stop looking back to where it once was, because it's not there. It's here. Look, 